Hi VC, it's Rob with another video. Um, this is a video showing a couple of things I've picked up from Amazon and some stuff I picked up over the weekend. Been quite busy, quite a bit of stuff to show you, so I better crack on. Uh, before I show you my vinyl, I just want to uh, thank Steve Carlson for giving me a shout out on his channel and also Matt Hayes for giving me a shout out on this channel. That's a, I really appreciate it. Now, who you can hear in the background is Elbow. And um, this album's called Little Fictions. They're a band from Manchester, um, formed in 1998. Um, Guy Garvey's the lead singer. I've seen them live. They're a great live band. Uh, this is the seventh album, um, and for people in America who may be not aware, Elbow are a really big band in Britain, very popular band, um, kind of art rock, alternative, indie, whatever you want to call it, great songs, every album is fantastic, and with Elbow, the first couple of albums, they didn't sell that well, but I think the people at the record company, the people in the music industry could see the potential they had and uh, they performed at Glastonbury in I think 2010 they put on a great performance and their career has just been on the rise since then a couple of number one albums a very popular band in the UK so that's Elbow I really recommend check them out great band uh, something else I picked up from Amazon I've not even opened it yet so there are but four, four small faces so this is, it's like a best of the small faces really. Um, when I was 18, I had a scooter. I was a mod. So if you're a mod, the Who, the small faces, they were the bands to be into. And yeah, I had a few singles by the small faces. I think I had a compilation somewhere similar to this, but it went, it went missing. Um, I saw this on Amazon and it was only 13 quid, so I couldn't turn it down. So it's got HQ Park on it. Here comes the nice Tin Soldiers. Yeah, it couldn't go wrong with that. So, yeah, small faces. Um, now, I went to, it's turning into my favourite record shop, really, at the moment. One in Rochdale called Rocks. And I went at, after work on Friday. Um, I always go there with 20 quid. And I always think, right, I'm going to spend 20 quid. And what did I pick up? I picked up this album by a band called The Brand New Heavies, formed, formed in London in the late 80s. I um, was trying to see what label it's on, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, kind of part of the acid jazz scene around London in the early 90s. And they're a band I always, I always quite liked, had a few singles by them, really enjoyed them. Uh, but I never really see any of their vinyl in, out in the wild. When I saw this for a fiver, I was all over it. So yeah, it's a good album, really nice. So yeah, I was pleased to pick that up, brand new heavies. Um, pick this up, Julian Cope. Big favorite of mine, Julian Cope. Uh, when I was about 17, um, I was into T-Drop Explodes. Um, the single reward came out, I think it was in 1980, great brass section. I bought the album Kilimanjaro and the follow-up album is called Wilder. If you ever see that in the wild, pick it up, it's a great album. He went on to have quite a good solo career. Um, I've seen him live as well and he's man as a hatter. This is a good album, it's got uh, China Doll on it, which is a great song. Charlatan, can't go wrong really, very consistent. Really like Julian Cope, so happy to pick that up. Um, now, my last purchase from Rocks was this one. And it's The Greatest Hits of Steely Dan. So it's a double album. Look at all those performers on that album. So all those songs, this is obviously, it's got all the hits on it. There was another compilation there, which was a single album, and that was Seven Quid. And it had FM on it, which was my introduction to Steely Dan. I loved FM. I remember buying that single and I loved it. And it was from a film about an American radio station. 
Um, and I've got all, I've got most of Celia Dan's studio albums, but I've made a, a commitment to myself not to play CDs in the house now. So sometimes when you just want to chill out and hear all Celia Dan's songs, I just thought it'd be nice to have the greatest hits. So we all know what's on it. Yeah, all the hits. We're actually performing in Manchester in a couple of weeks. Obviously, just Donald Fagan. Uh, sadly, uh, Walter Becker's no one with us, but yeah. So I'm not sure how that's going to sound, but yeah, happy to pick that up. One of my favourite American bands, Steely Dan. <laughs> this is a funny one. Um, yeah, I'm a sucker for disco. Um, in the late 70s, early 80s, you know, I was into bands like The Jam and The Police and stuff like that, but I like my disco. I've always liked disco. And I saw this yesterday, and I remember this single... I had this single, Taste of Funny, Boogie Oogie Oogie. It's one of my favourite disco songs. And when I saw this yesterday, it's in such good condition. I paid four quid for it. It's on Capital. Obviously, it's got Boogie Oogie Oogie on it. Um, I've just played that this, e this, is, this evening. And yeah, it's good fun. It's a good, good album. Please, I picked it up. So yeah, that's um, a Taste of Funny. And it's immaculate. It's like it's, I mean, proper one hit wonder band but that, that track's been sampled on lots of things and um, yeah happy to pick that up. Taste of funny. <laughs> this is a funny one. I don't I can't even pronounce this band is it Guadalcanal Diary. So I picked this up yesterday. Where I went to it's outside Manchester it's um, it's one of those places where there's about 700 stalls in there and it's people selling antiques and DVDs and furniture, all sorts of things. And I've been in before and they sell vinyl. And I thought, I'll go there, because I've bought vinyl from there before and you never know what you're gonna pick up from there. The prices are okay. So I had a little bit of a cheat on this one, because looking at the cover, I thought it was like an African album. But it turns out these guys are from Atlanta and they're just like a, a bit of an alternative band, sort of rem -E, I think. I played that, played this today, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm glad I picked it up. It's on the uh, Electra label. I mean, I've never seen this album before, and I'll, I'm a little bit like, well, I'm never ever going to see it again, so what do I do? Do I pick it up or not? I mean, it's got the last track on side two is Come By R, which is a, a little bit random. But yeah, I enjoyed it. It's the kind of thing I would have liked when I was about 17. So, and I still like the things I like when I was 17 now, so happy to pick that up. So, yeah. Now, this one, bit of an 80s classic, Scritti Politti, um, Green Garside from Wales. Um, he went to university in Leeds, and while he was at university in Leeds, he went to see the Sex Pistols in 1976. And from that experience, he formed Scritti Politti. This album was uh, quite a big hit in the UK. It was an independent hit. It's on Rough Trade Records. It's one of the first albums on Rough Trade. And um, yeah, I was looking up about Scritti Politti and um, Miles, Miles Davis covered one of their tracks on his album Tutu, a song called Perfect Way. I wasn't aware of that. And uh, also he performed on Old Patty by Scritti Politti in the, I think it was about 86. So yeah, happy to pick this up. Um, Green Garside's a really interesting person. Um, he he collapsed on stage performing, they were supporting the Gang of Four in 1980, and they thought he'd had a heart attack. But he'd actually just had a panic attack, so he went back to Wales to recuperate. And um, he listened to a lot of American kind of disco music, a lot of reggae, and he came out, came out with the sound for this album, Songs to Remember. Um, and I, I played this, I enjoyed it, I'm glad I picked it up. The only thing is, someone put a sticker of five pounds on it and I can't get it off, so it's a little bit annoying. But yeah, happy to pick that up, Scritti Politti. Now, you all know these guys, free. Now, I'm not a rock guy. I'm not into rock music, really. But certain music in that kind of genre, I'm starting to get into. 
and free fall into that to that category. I love Paul Rogers' voice. I think he's got a great voice. And growing up, sort of when I was 16, 17, I remember All Right Now coming out in the charts and it was an EP and it had Wishing Well on it and My Brother Jake and I always enjoyed those tracks. So, and then I've been watching a documentary about Bad Company and at the start of the documentary, it's all about free. So I've really got into free. So when I saw this yesterday for six pounds, it's the third album. The first two albums did nothing. But this album sold well all over the world. Um, it's only got seven tracks on it, but it's in pretty good condition. And it's a great album. I was reading about um, Paul Rogers and when Jim Morrison died, the people from The Doors came over to Britain and they wanted him to do the single with The Doors, but it just didn't happen. Uh, he's committed to be in bad company. And also when Ian Gillan left, um, Deep Purple, they wanted him to be a singer with Deep Purple, Purple as well. So that's, you know, he's got one of the great voices of rock and I really like Free, so I'm happy to pick that up. Great album. Um, this is a band I've always had plenty of time for, Sparks. And uh, the album's called Terminal Jive and it came out in 1980. Now, when I saw Sparks on Top of the Pops in 1974 singing This Town Ain't Big Enough for the Both of Us, I just thought, what a strange band. You know, they had a really charismatic singer and then they had a guy on the keyboards who was just so strange. And, you know, it turns out they were brothers. And they had a few, they had a few other hits in the, in the 70s. And then towards the end of the 70s, they had a... Um, quite a few hits, um, Beat the Clock, kind of a little bit more of a disco vibe. And this album's from 1980, I've not played it yet, but I like Sparks, I know I'm gonna like it. Um, a little bit of a fact about Sparks, about three years ago, they took up residency in a, in a, um, a venue in London, and I think they've had over 30 albums, but what they decided to do is every night they would recreate every one of their albums so Russell the singer was saying some of the tracks they've not performed them since they did the albums so they actually performed each album on each night I'm sure that was a great experience but I've never seen Sparks live it's a bit of a regret I'd like to see them great characters right two more to go I saw this yesterday and I was so pleased it's traffic now I don't own any vinyl by traffic and this is a reissue and on the sticker it says it's um, limited to 500 copies issued in 2016 and it was 20 pounds I, I take it that it was part of record store day and it's a really nice album um, the second studio album I mean it's got a really nice booklet with it as well um, I'm, I'm really pleased to pick this up. Um, I didn't know whether I'd ever see any traffic out in the wild that I could afford, especially in condition like this. So I was really pleased to pick it up for 20 pounds. So yeah, bit of traffic, happy with that. That was a good buy. Now the last purchase was this one, Depeche Mode kind of singles between 1981 and 1975. Um, now Depeche Mode, when I was 17, came onto the scene and I never in a million years would have predicted the career they've had. I mean, I remember seeing them on Top of the Pops doing New Life and I just thought, these are gonna be here today, gone tomorrow. Uh, nice pop singles, just can't get enough, another good single, but I just thought, a couple of years, never hear from them again. Vince Clark left the band, and I just thought, it's curtains, but, you know, how wrong was I? I mean, they're probably one of the major pop bands in the world now, um, and good luck to them. Um, I've never seen them live, would I like to see them live? 
yeah, I think I would, given the opportunity. I mean, things change for um, Depeche Mode, I think. You look at this album, songs like People Are People, um, Everything Counts, Blasphemous Rumours, and you could see sort of a change in the band and maturity in the songwriting. And yeah, they've turned out to be one of our greatest exports. So yeah, it's a nice package. And again, like I say, I don't want to play CDs in the house. So now I can put Depeche Mode on and enjoy all the hits from the early 80s. So yeah, that's all my pickups from the last couple of days. Hope you've enjoyed my video. Uh, thanks for subscribing and uh, have a great week. Bye.